good morning, good morning, everyone. Guess what? It's Motivation Monday. New week, new goals. Morning blessings to everyone out there in social media land. Listen, y'all go ahead and reach out to everyone that you love. Everyone that you want to be motivated, inspired, and encouraged today because we have an amazing guest this morning. Pamela, Pamela Whitfield. Y'all, I want to call her professor. professor. I want to call her chef. I want to call her doctor. I want to call her everything that's beautiful. This woman of God, you don't want to miss the message because I believe that she has a word from the Lord. The topic is I'm just getting started. Ooh. That right there. Let that sit. Let Ooh. that sit. Please let that sit. I'm just getting started. And I believe that's for many of you this morning. Don't delay. Don't procrastinate. Call up everyone you know need to hear this word. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Coach Deb, and I'm delighted to have Pamela Whitfield this morning. You know, let me just share with you, she's not new to this. She's true to this. She has been a guest before, and she just, she broke the internet. The last time she, she was with us, she shared all the amazing things that God was doing and about to do. I'm going to let her take the lead and share with you all this morning what God has been doing because he is coming through. You know, God is a God of his word, what he say he will do. And the thing about it is the importance of revealing and healing. Let me just tell you, you can't heal if you won't reveal. And you miss out on so many amazing things that the Lord want to release and give to you if you were to begin to walk in a healing place. That's right. That's right. Pam, take this opportunity and uh, <laughs> just give the people something about the importance of healing. What does reveal and heal mean to you? Ooh. <laughs> I, you well, good morning, first of all, beautiful, and thank you for having me. Um, I am so proud of you. Let's get on that first. I am extremely, I think I posted on your Facebook the other day. Honey, we see you. You are shining a light so bright. We see you. And I am, so I know the testimony. I don't know it all, but I know what you've let us know. And honey, you are mentoring us and helping us to heal in more ways than you will ever know. So God, Bless you. You have done an amazing job. Do you see your kids out here flourishing? That's not even supposed to happen. You know, per the story, you know, per what I'm proud of you. Okay. Just let's let's get that out of the way. All right. I am proud of you. Talk about a testimony, baby. Honey, I'm proud of you. Okay. So, honey, let's I don't forgot what the question was, but let's get on to no, no, okay. wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, after, oh my God. Now listen, I did not tell you to say that. You did not. You did not. Honey, can't nobody tell me what to say. You know, I'm 50, almost 54 years old. Can't oh my God. And you, you caught me off guard now. I, and I said what I said. I'm standing firm on that. You have, you have walked through this journey that you've been on with grace, honey. And you have taught us how to have our heads high and our chest up no matter what we're going through and stand by your children and, and stand by your faith and stand on the word when everybody else back here got something to say about it. Baby, we watching, honey. We I'm just a few years younger, but honey, we watching and we see it. And I appreciate you for that because if you can get to where you are with what you've been through, then I know that I can do the same thing. So I salute you. I appreciate you, woman of God. I appreciate the woman that you are doing your best to get the rest of us healed. And it's a process. You hear me? It is a daily process to choose healing because you have to choose healing. Healing don't just fall up on you. You have to choose healing every day, every day. It's, I've never done drugs or anything like that, but I can imagine you got to choose not to every day. So you got to choose to be healed every day. And that's where my testimony lies. Every day I got to get up and I got to choose healing. I got to choose which side I'm going to 
stay in depression and self-doubt and, 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 and not being worthy, or I'm going to choose to walk in my healing. And every, every morning when I get up, I'm like, honey, it's another day's journey. And I'm, what, I'm glad about it. And I'm going to choose healing on this day. The word say, honey, choose who you will serve. Right. And I serve a wonderful God. And, and I am grateful for him for this time of healing. I posted something. I saw something on somebody's social media the other day. And I posted something. And, and it said, Lord, I thank you for not allowing me to sit at the table that you would have turned over. Did you hear what I just said? Honey, did you hear what I just said? The tables he would have turned over. He, yesterday I posted, have you ever thanked God for your unanswered prayers? Come on now. Like the stuff he turned down. I got I got a big wall down in my office. My office is a mess. That's why we're not in here. We're in my husband's office, okay? <laughs> So I got a big office downstairs and it's a mess, right? Because that's kind of how my life is. Just a little chaotic right now. I got Come a lot on of now. Stuff. So on my wall, I told my husband, I said, I want just a big whiteboard. So he went and did it and got a big whiteboard. And on here, I got prayer and answer prayers, right? When the Lord answered them, right? When I started and when they got answered. And then I got the unanswered prayers. And I got a question. I had a question mark by him. But when I didn't get the answer, I just started marking them off because that was my answer. I'm thinking he done forgot. He like, no, I answered it when I didn't say nothing. My silence was my answer. Oh, come on now. Sometimes the answer is in the silence. I don't have to answer that. I already told you what it was. You refused to see it. That's when I knew I got my healing, when I could erase that right there without even worrying about it. When I, I didn't even worry about what's on this, this right side no more. When, when other things just kept, he don't put stuff over here on this, on this left hand column that I didn't even ask for. I don't even remember asking for him. I, I've been getting some suddenly blessings. You know what a suddenly blessing is? Oh, come on, come on. When stuff just, uh, and just happened. Oh my God. Driving in my car the other day. I'm not to probably get off topic, but it's on topic. Oh, uh -uh, come on so, now. We're talking so about the you. Other day, the other day, I'm, I'm riding in my car, and I said, so my husband's on active duty, right, for a year, uh, over a year, from last year, August, to this year, to this year uh, December. So he's on active duty, and I never want to cause any stress or strain to my husband financially. I left corporate America and started this catering company, and you know I'm like, okay, Lord, this is how much money I need to make every month, so I don't cause no stress on my husband, right? He's stressed enough. It's stressed enough being a black man wearing his uniform in this world, okay? Um, so I'll never want to stress him out. So um, I said, all right, Lord, this is how much money I need to make every month. So every week I've been tithing an additional 15%, right? Because we are, we are both tithers. And we looked at our tithe report this year and I almost fell out like that. Because we didn't realize how much we put in, right? I'm, this ain't bragging. I'm just saying what I'm saying. We put over $20,000 worth of tithes in. See, folks don't know when to shout. We put over 20000 and we didn't miss a beat. We ain't never missed a mortgage. We ain't never missed. I bought a new vehicle, paid cash for it. I ain't bragging. I'm talking about what my tithes and what he Give him glory, did. girl. Come on okay? now. I'm talking about what tithing, what sowing, what reaping, what receiving. And that's all in that whole healing process will do for you. Right? Because my tithes went before me for my healing. Right. My tithes went before me for my sewing. So that's what I'm talking about. I ain't bragging about spending twenty thousand dollars in my time. I'm talking about we ain't went without nothing. Sounds like process to me, sis. You better. OK, so I'm driving down the highway and I'm like, OK, Lord, um, this is how much I need to make every month. So I'm on track. You got me on track. And hey, hey, play. I appreciate it because that's how I talk to you. Hey, play you up. I need to talk to you about something. So he said, oh, that's it. Not 30, not 30 seconds later, my phone rang from somebody. I gave a quote, um, just a copy of my catering menu to a couple of weeks ago. 
hey, um, can I speak to Pam? Hey, it's Pam. Hey, this is Coach Deb. And my uh, fiance and I are getting married on a Monday. A Monday, April 4th. Can you do our wedding? And I can. He said, okay, this is our budget. Their budget was more than, okay, don't worry about that part. Trust and believe, okay? So he was like, yeah, this is what we want. This is what we want. We didn't look at any other caterers. We just called you. We've never had your food, but we've heard about you. Because my name is in rooms I ain't even walked in yet. I don't know this lady from a can of paint, okay? But my name is already over there. So somebody is talking about my- I need my to repeat that, uh, sis. Please pardon me for interrupting. No, no I problem. need to repeat that you, did you just say your name is in rooms that you ain't been in yet? I ain't still no size nine Y'all please shoe in let that, that sit. Please let that sit. Let that sit. Her name is in rooms that she ain't been in. And she's talking about the healing process. Continue, sis. That's a part of the healing. So I'm like, how did you hear about me? He was like, I don't know. My wife did. My, my fiance did. She heard about your food and she was like, she said, he said, we went on your Instagram and saw your food and we saw some of your Facebook lives and just love like, you're just so raw and real. Like, don't worry about my hair. Don't worry about me being fat. Do y'all want some of this food? Oh yeah, that's how, that's how we roll. Hey, don't worry about, it. you don't want no skinny shelf anyway. And you don't want no skinny shelf. I don't trust them. I don't trust them. They're not eating what they cook. So oh my God. they booked me immediately. I pull over on side of the road, send them a contract immediately. Cause I don't want you to change your mind, right? They sent me back my money immediately. For the last six months, I have been catering on and off for a major um, corporation, okay? 300 meals each time I go, right? Um, and the people that work there are always like, ooh, I wish you could come back every day. It will be a lot for every day because I'm just a small company. But I was like, okay, Lord, I really need to get them on my book every week. Who called? Them. Hey, can we start scheduling you? You pick the day of the week and we would love to have you here every day. I ain't bragging about that. I'm telling you that it's $4,000 every time I go. Do you hear me? Are you on here? It's $4,000 every time I show my face in there. And remember, remember, you don't want to stretch your husband. I don't want to stretch remember, my husband. Right, and right. Now, you done God. already went before God. I, just, I, I hope everybody's listening to this, just listening to the steps. Please listen to what is happening here. She is happening. She, she put it before God. Mm -hmm. She continues to be obedient. Mm -hmm. She pay her tithe. Mm -hmm. She do her healing stuff. Mm -hmm. And God is taking care of the rest. We're listening. I gave God a number. Honey, he threw that number in the trash and threw something back. Oh, this is not nothing. I've been paying an additional 15% on my tithes, right? I've been putting some feet to my faith, right? I've been paying an additional 15%. We all know the churches are hurting right now, you know, so I've been taking a little added stress off my pastor and first lady as well, right? So I've been putting, I told my husband, I said, let's add a little 15% to our tithe. He was like, all right, let's do it. And he was like, you know, is it something in particular? No, just because we can. And the Lord been faithful to us. And he was like, all right, bet. No questions asked. Let's do it. He gave me that whole amount that I've been paying in. And then sprinkle something. Like, and then sprinkle something. So I'm not saying tithing, you know, it's a process. Tithing is a process. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm not forcing or saying anything. I'm talking about this is all a part of my healing. I've always tied since I was 29. I'm, I, I'm 53. So I have tied since I was 29 years old. Even when I didn't have. I, I've been a tither. I've been a sower. And, and I have been a believer. Um, so that's all a part of getting me to where I'm going. Because now you I what you sow. Listen, I am traveling the world. I I went to 12 places last year. Oh, Pam. And I'm talking about countries. I'm not talking about 
in the states. I'm talking about countries. This not bragging. I'm telling you what God can do. And I'm a business owner. So when I don't work, there ain't no business flowing. I'm sitting up in the bed doing contracts for when I get back because of his faithfulness and his trust in me. 365 days in a year and we did 89 events last year. I've only been doing this two years since 2019. So there'll be three, right? Yeah, three in June. I have 61 events on my books for 2022. I can't take anybody from October to December. One more week in September and it's September. One more week in August and it's August to, to December. That's his faithfulness. That's his faithfulness. But he didn't start blessing me to that realm till I started wanting to get whole. Till I started wanting to heal. I have been walking around broken for the past four years. Oh, it looked good on the outside, right? Because I got everything going on on the outside. I come in these doors at my house where I can be vulnerable to my husband and I'm broken. I lost some friendships that I didn't know why that were like family to me. And both my parents, my brother, and, and people that I thought should have been there for me because I've been there for them and they weren't broken. I was broken. Like, what did I do to them? You know, I'm there for everybody. Anyway. And it's the thing, right? The people I thought were supposed to be there weren't. And God placed other people there. And I pushed them to the waste. I didn't push them to the wayside. I just didn't appreciate them enough because I was looking for the other people to be there, right? And God was like, I was like, Lord, why aren't they there? He's like, that's not who you need around you. You keep looking. Remember the song, Looking for Love in All the Wrong Places? Remember that song growing up? Yes, indeed. It still holds true with friendships and, and bonds and soul <laughs> ties. It, it still holds true. And he was like, I sent you a tribe. I sent you a village. Where I'm trying to take you, this not your village. Don't mean you don't you can't speak to them, you you can't love on, you can't love them, but you're going somewhere completely different. That they're not ready to go. They're not ready to go. I reconnected with a really great friend of mine that I had been friends with for um when my children were younger. Um, for like 10 years and then I got married and moved around and and um, just kind of lost contact you know and we social media she found me on social media and I was like girl where you been and you know that kind of stuff we reconnected and she said anything you need you let me know I'd be glad to to work with you in your business and help you out you don't owe me anything you never have to pay me I just want to see you succeed well, in November, she called me crying. And she, she's not a crier. So I was like, what's wrong? And she was like, I got to move. Um, they're selling, she was renting a house, gone through a divorce. And she was like, um, I can't afford to stay here. And, you know, everybody's rent gouging, you know, right now. And she said, they're actually selling the house or I can pay them double of what I'm paying. And I just, you know, can't do it. And I was like, well, my basement's empty. You want to come stay? So see, while she was helping me promote my business all this time, God was setting that up for me to be able to be a blessing to her. Now, I told her, now, when my husband come, you got to go, because I can't have no woman in my house with my husband here, okay? Now, I'm, I love her and all, but I'm just being, oh, okay. We're not ready for them kind of conversations yet, but I'm just better saying. Put that out there. People better yeah. listen. Yeah, Ugh. no, 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 no. She can stay here as long as it's just me and her. All right, yes, ma'am. Right? But when my husband come home, she was like, 
Honey, I'm already be packed and my stuff, because she's not going to even know I was here. And she get it, respectfully. And respectfully. Or it can be irrespectfully at this time. It don't matter. Stay here when my husband come home, because this is his safe haven. And I want him, when my king come in the house, I want Always him to safe. be able to, I want him to, this is his space. And you can't have two cackling hens in the same house. Plus, I don't trust nobody around my, okay, well, that's another stuff, but you, you don't invite stuff in, right? So now that's a like, whole nother message. That's a whole nother message, but I'm just saying I, I was taught that as a that early is average. so man. I hope they caught that. Y'all better drop all these nuggets that my sister's dropping this morning. Y'all need to be taking notes and writing it down because she's it's an auction. She mm -hmm. didn't plan any of this. Mm -hmm. These that she's been inspired. So y'all need to be dropping y'all. Need to be writing this stuff. Go ahead, have your way, honey. Yeah. So that I mean, um, just be. I mean, she has been just a blessing to me. Uh, she she does housekeeping on the side. I don't like housework. That just ain't my thing. I like to cook and mess up the kitchen, and it just be clean when I get back. And that's what she does. She said, "Just, just leave it. I'll take care of it." I'm talking about floors, mop, clothes, fold, all of that. She don't ask for nothing. The Lord will he do it, girl. What he do it? He just, that's what my husband does. I mean, that's just what he does. That's our agreement. I cook and stuff, and you, you know, that's sounds what like a does. balance to me. I mean, that's that's what it is. And but he complained about it a little. You know, you you left the kitchen nasty, and I cleaned it up. Okay, she, she don't say nothing. She's like, go on and go to bed. I got it. You tired? You done cooked all day. Now she ain't been to work all day. And then I'm telling you, God will send you what you need when you need it. Every the time. last time my husband was on active duty, I was in a depressed state. He didn't even, he had no idea. Um, I stayed in this, I we had just purchased this home and um I moved in by myself, all of that. He didn't even know where the house was. He's on active duty. I said, Oh, by the way, I bought a house today for us. Uh, here's the address, and this is what your mortgage is. So, um, whenever you get ready to come home, this way you need to come to because all the stuff gone from the other house. So he, um, I sat in this house for six months in the dark. Not that the lights were off, but in the dark, in a dark place. And I kept praying to God, like, what am I? How can I get up and move? And He's like, you just got to stand up. Now I'm out serving and helping other people and being there for other people. And when I come home, I didn't even turn the lights on. Talk about it. Cause I was in the dark. Right. And pay, pay my electric bill every month and still was in the dark. Right. And, uh, it's kind of like the lame man laying by the pool. Cause all he had to do was get up. He, he had the power. He, That's he just, all he had to do. And the whole time, those whole four years, I had the power, and I just refused to get up and turn the light on. And so one morning at 3.13 a.m., and we, we all consider 13 to be an unlucky number, but at 3.13, the Lord woke me up, and I got up, and I went to the bathroom, and drugged myself, and got back in the bed, and Something was burning hot in the bed. I couldn't even lay in the bed. It, my bed was on fire. So I'm thinking there's some ants in the bed. Like I'm looking. And every time I got ready to get in that bed, Deb, it was on fire. I called my husband. I said, oh, we got to get new mattresses. Mind you, the bed was brand new. I said, they didn't send us something with bed bugs. This bed is on fire. Because I spent every day in that bed when I would come home. I was going to mentor to these young girls and all of the weight that they carried, I carried it home with me. And I had unresolved issues from childhood that I'm reliving through them. So they're telling me about being molested and stuff. And meanwhile, I'm dealing with that. I, I haven't been healed from my molestation growing up. I haven't been, I haven't been, um, treated for my molestation and from, from the things I dealt with as a child. And here I am taking on somebody else's. 
I'm That's telling real. them, it's, I'm telling them it's going to be okay. And I'm not okay. So I, I got up. I, I mean, for two days, I couldn't sleep in the bed. I slept in the floor because the bed was burning hot. So I'm looking at something on, um, on my phone and for work. And it said something about therapy. I'm not doing no therapy. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm good. Cause I'm every I'm here for everybody. So I'm hey, good. Tom, yeah, I know about that. And every day that the same email will pop up. So I'm asking my coworkers, are y'all getting this email? They're like, no, we didn't get that. They say it must be spam. Don't click on it. And I call the number. And that calling that number changed my life. Now I know I get on his nerves so bad. Honey, I know he has to drink a whole gallon of liquor after he get through talking to me. But when I tell you, the healing began on that day. The healing began at that moment. And you are looking at someone who is on her way to being completely healed. And I mean, my walk is different. My talk is different. Who I am is different. And um, I know whose I am. And the rest of the stuff don't even matter. You remember uh, this joy that I have? Yes. The world can't give it and the world I can't give it, honey. Money. Yes, ma'am. That's on me a whole different thing now. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And uh, so I'm grateful. And, and, and therapy works, right? And therapy is therapeutic. And some days, I don't even say nothing. I, I just go in the office and plop down and have me a good old cry. And, um, and some days, I probably talk too much and he started drinking. I'm, I'm sure in that cup, he dr it don't be coffee all the time. He know I'm coming. He got to start drinking it. I probably owe him more money than what he charged me, but I'm I'm getting there. And I am on cloud nine about it. And um, I don't serve like in the capacity that I used to as much because um, I'm sewing into my business a little bit more because I started regretting serving and I started doing it and not having a grateful heart about it. And I can't give God 50% of nothing. I hope y'all hear this. I so, hope y'all hear that. Oh my God. Girl, I was you are just dropping stuff this morning. Well, I was serving everybody and wasn't getting served. And so I had to take a step. So if I can't make it on a Monday, it's, it's okay. Somebody else is out there. And I don't take that to heart anymore. Oh God, if I don't go, they won't eat. And they still be out there the next week when I go. So they eating. There ain't nobody starving because I didn't go. And I had to learn that, that I got to take some time just for me. Um, I went on vacation by myself uh, for the first time in forever. And honey, I- That's a real it. sign of healing, fam. That's a real sign of healing when you can enjoy your own company. When I tell you, my I'm, choice. My best, I'm my own best friend. Honey, I laughed with me and drove 200 miles in a foreign country. I'm in a foreign country. Got off the plane and rented a car and drove 200 miles to where. I, honey, drove, found my hotel. They're like, you by yourself? I am. Met some amazing people that I'm still friends with now that I fly to, to um, California and see them. And they come here to see me. Um, just met some genuine people and woke up when I wanted to, took some Mexican cooking classes. And honey, over this lady house, honey, I don't know her from a can of paint. Looked her up, saw it, went over there, honey, felt like I was at home. Ate dinner with this. She said, honey, come eat breakfast with me tomorrow. I sure will. Went over there the next day, swinging on the porch, honey, just like it was my auntie healed that's i was healing the result of healing that's 
Honey, I was my own best friend. Beyonce do uh, me, myself, and I. That's all I got in the end. Honey, sung that song. Right. Sung that song for a whole hour while I'm driving to my hotel. It was just an amazing. The journey has been worth it, and I have documented the journey. And um, a few uh, a few days ago, I posted how um, it's so easy to get caught up in who and what, and you forget you're the who and the what. And most of all, I'm the why. I'm the why. And we have to remember that you're the why. And remember what I bring to this table. Because I'm going to leave you with something when I come. I'm going to leave you. You're going to know, I, even if I made you laugh about something and you remember it on that, I'm going to leave you with something. That's for sure. And that's why when, when people want to, I invite them over to my house and come and sit at my bar because then we can sit down and have a genuine heart to heart and I can cook for you and you know that it was made out of love. And we're going to eat and we're going to laugh and we may even cry there. But there's been some healing here in this house. And I've had couples come for tastings and they're like, one guy said, um, we don't, we haven't even tasted your food yet and we're going to hire you just because I felt different when I walked through here. And a couple years ago, he couldn't have walked in here and said that because it was really a doom and gloom. It was a house, but it wasn't home. And so being healed or wa walking through this healing process, through this journey, um, my house is now a home. And I'm a better wife. I'm a better mother. I'm a better grandmother. Um, I'm a better friend. Um, I'm starting to heal with my sister. Um, who, who is 10 miles away and we pro we didn't have a conversation when our parents died. Um, we probably really hadn't sat down and talked in 12 years. And um, so we talk every day now. Now I still be wanting to choke her, but that's okay. I still love her. But we talk, uh, you know, where are we got? You know, we lost both parents and a brother. Like it's just us at this point. So um it's sad that sometimes it takes death right but we both took care of our dad uh before he passed away so we did what we were supposed to do and um yeah that was a part of healing because the old me couldn't forgive her and she couldn't forgive me and you know you just got to be the bigger person and move on because at the end of the day again it's just she and i so if we lose each other you know, we'll just be the one person. So I, I'm grateful that we're on, we're, we're trying to get on that right track um, to mend. And um, that's, that's going to be a, a long process. And we both realize that, but we're going to, I'm, I'm going to do my part. So I'll just say that I'm definitely going to do my part. So I am um, grateful for healing and um, grateful that the weight W-E-I-G-H-T was worth the weight W-A-I-T. Yeah. 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 The weight was worth the weight. So um, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Oh my God. The Ma weight was worth the weight. Yeah. I can't wait till your book comes out. <laughs> I have, let me tell you. Okay, so people talk about that all the time. And, and I have started the process over and over and over again. I suffer with dyslexia. And um, so it's hard for me. And you're probably one of the only, you're probably one of the 10 per people that know that. Well, not everybody gonna know it, but that's okay. I suffer with dyslexia. So, um, you know, I see things this way when they're really this way. And so it's hard for me to write because I get frustrated because this is how I see things when this, you know, and then I ask my husband to read it and I can tell on his face that it doesn't make sense um, because he, and he tries not to show it because he was like, well, maybe we need to change. 
and I'm telling him, I'm telling him verbally what I want to say. And he's like, well, that's not quite what it says. So suffering with that, um, and, and I know I need to write the book because someone else with that needs to know that it's possible. Um, but that's a part of my process because I don't tell people that a lot because they still try to figure out how I got through, you know, owning a company and working in corporate America and being a director in corporate America. And I have little to no comprehension um, because of my dyslexia. I have memorization. But once I know something, if you show me, oh, I can memorize it. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's, it's a wrap. But if I read it, I can't comprehend it because it doesn't make any sense to me. So um, when people are like, oh, you should get this book and I have to always get it on Audible because I can't read it. Um, I mean, I can read, I just can't comprehend it. I so it's just, a bunch, yeah, it's just a bunch of words on paper. So, and I didn't get diagnosed as a child, um, which was weird because I was good at memorizing stuff. So I would just, memorize all the answers of whatever my teacher said and my mom would always like call out the questions and I memorize the answers like I'm telling her the answer before she get the whole question out because I could memorize anything so I've never failed the test because I had great memorization skills mm. but I don't know what I read and I can't tell you what it means show me on paper I can do it right so, or show me by hand because I can't really understand it on paper but if you show me by hand I can do it so um, that's been a battle for me. Um, but nobody would, that's not something that people would just know because you're right. so intelligent and your brilliance outshine whatever this, you know, place is that you're lacking. I yeah. can tell you, I understand that. And for me, I've been writing my book for five years now. And, and I was told by a professional that I would just need to uh, record it, record my story and let somebody else do the writing. Yeah. So I have Dragon. Are you familiar with Dragon? Mm -mm. So that helps me. So it's like what you're trying to say goes, uh, it goes on the paper. You're just not typing it really, you know? So that okay. might work for you. That may you work know? for me. I need to look into that. Yeah, because it's just to... what you're saying. Yeah, you I have know, definitely but with this writing, It's like, uh, what is that? Yeah, yeah. I've definitely procrastinated with it. Um, and the Lord keeps giving me, you know, gems and stuff to share. And, yes, ma'am. You know, and, and I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. You got a lot of books in you, honey. We want the yeah. first series, though. <laughs> <laughs> get that first one. Let's, you know, get out, let's get ours out together and have a book sign and go on tour. Oh, God. You really couldn't find it. My let's feet let's hold that. each other accountable. Oh, let's hold each other accountable. bless God. Oh, my God. All my life, that's what I need. That's how I get anything done. It's accountability. It's let's like hold, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's oh hold each God. other accountable and let's make it happen. Okay. That mean, right. I, that's what I need. I promise you. It's like I'm not a pusher like that, but mm -hmm. I can sure enough be on your toes. Like now, you know what? And I need that too. Yeah. Yeah. So we yeah. we definitely we definitely need to make that happen. We let's do. talk. Let's um let's talk about the impact you want to leave. Let's talk okay. about your legacy, Pam. Okay. People know you, sweetie. They know your works, your works. They know, you know, your deeds. And it's like, it's so much that can be said about you. You know that people have always said that your life, the life that you live is your funeral, pretty much. Nobody mm -hmm. has to preach it. It's what you live, right? Right, right. So, but for you, you know, what is it that, do you want a statue? Do you want, you know, uh, people to, to make a big deal out of you when you go home to be with the Lord? Or you one that just want people to know that you were here? What is your legacy? Well, I, you know, my husband and I talk about all the time that dash, right? 1968 until. I just want people to say, honey, that child lived her life. The That's best it. life? That, I lived my life. The good, the bad, the ugly, honey, I lived my life. And I tell, I tell my husband all the time, if I should happen to go before you, because um, my wish is cremation, right? 
take my ashes all over the world, honey, and spread a little bit to the places I didn't get to go. And honey, spread it at sunrise or sunset, because those are my favorite times of the day. And honey, spread my ashes out so I can, my body, my ashes can lay at rest at the places that I didn't get to go. So that I will still be there. And that's what I do with my mom because she never went on vacation. So anytime I go anywhere, I take a little bit of her ashes and I spread them out um, during sunrise or sunset so that I can say, all right, girl, we here, we're in El Salvador, we're in Guatemala, and we're on the train going here. And that's what I do with my mom. So that's that was my wish. I just want people to say, I lived. If they like me, if they don't like me, if they love me, if they don't, honey, one thing you can say about Pam Whitfield, she worked and she lived. And that's it. That's all I they don't have to, I don't need nothing else. She worked and she lived. And that's oh, wow. it. That's it. I lived. Oh, wow. Pam, that's I beautiful. Lived. I lived, honey. I lived. Every time some, what you doing? Living. I, I work hard so that I can live. And I never want to be. My mother was a hardworking woman and um, she she passed away in 12 days, right? And, and she said to me, she said, Gail, that's my middle name. She always called me that, Gail, um, I wish I'd have took you up on some of those vacations and went with you. Now here I am here, I'm not going back home and I never went anywhere. She said, girl, you better keep going. And you ain't got to worry about me. I was planning on a trip right after she passed away. She said, take my ashes and spread them out in Hawaii because I always wanted to go to Hawaii. And so that's what my husband and I did. We granted her wish. We spread some of her ashes out in Hawaii. Rented a, rented a yacht and went out on the yacht and spread some of her ashes out there. And um, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do this everywhere I go all over the world, United States, wherever I go, I'm gonna take a little bit of her and I'm gonna spread her out. So I want people to, I don't want to be almost 70 years old. And if that's my time to say, oh, I woulda, shoulda, and coulda, I, I did it my way. I did it my way. And that's it. That's, I want, honey, that girl worked and she lived and that's it. I don't need nothing else. Don't put my face on no t-shirt. Mm -mm. Don't cry over. Don't don't cry. You don't even have to have no funeral. Now you're for talking. Me. Now you're don't, talking now. Mm -mm. Don't have no funeral. You ain't had to have no funeral for me. I don't need all of that. Cause you, where was you at when I was here? Ain't no sense in crying when I'm gone. I don't need all of that. I, we don't need all of that, honey. Just, I she lived. And take me straight from now hospital wherever I went straight on to the cremation don't take me to the funeral home because then that costs more money I learned that the hard way don't do that just had them gone gone and burnt that's my wish it's already it's in my will and then take care of my babies and say she lived yeah. spread them out spread them out it don't even matter at that point because I'm it don't even matter at that point but that's my that's my wish Spread me out, honey. Spread, keep spreading love. Keep, keep, keep spreading, spreading keep spreading the love, honey. She lived. And Pam would, oh, she would have loved this. Because I would look up a place and be like, ooh. So I went to Guatemala this year, last year. And they had this hand. And I thought it was on the ground. And you could, no, it's up in the air and it's over a cliff. So if you go out too far, you it's 9,000 feet above sea level. So I ain't know I ain't do my research real good, but I just wanted to get to the hand. So we walking out there. I said, "What the, what a bridge that hold it?" She's like, "Oh no, there's no bridge. You just out there." Okay, so I go out there and I said, "She got, he got the whole world in his hand." Because it was just really one big hand. And I, I get out there and I'm like, I took my mama's ashes and I spread them out. I'm like, girl, we in this hand and we're not going to be out here long. We're going to get on back over here to where it's safe. But just being able to be in a third world country, not speaking the language um, with a, a group of ladies that are my true friends and being able to share that moment with them. They never thought about going to Guatemala. Um, I just kind of 
that's where I want to go. And I mean, it was just an amazing experience. So I lived I, and took a train ride from Seattle to LA with four of my friends, with three of my friends. And they were like, we wouldn't have never thought about this. Then I look on Facebook the other day, four of my friends, what they do, taking train rides. And I wouldn't have never thought about this had you not done it. Just live. Life is too short. Just live. That's all I want to do. That's my prayer to the Lord every day. Let me be able every day to do something nice for somebody. I don't care if it's a phone call. If it's sometimes I just, what's your cash app? I'm going to send you some lunch money. Sometimes I just hold the door open for somebody that didn't even speak to me as I walked by me, you know, just something. And, um, and just live. Speak to somebody that, you know, we've been wearing these masks and hiding behind these masks for the past two years. Mm-hmm. I just want to take my mask off. Mm-hmm. Not out in public. Mm-hmm. I'm still going to wear my mask, but I mean, mm-hmm. the mask that I've been hiding behind. I know what you're saying. So I just want to take my mask off and live. And, and be free to live. And that that's that's all I want to do. That's how I just want to live. Oh boy. This little light of mine. Um, yes. Yeah, that's it. And you're let shining. It, that's I that's mean, all that's all I want to do. Just let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. That's it. So yeah, so that's 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 it. Just live. Okay, if I could leave, if I die today. Tonight is my last day on earth. She lived. She lived. Well, it's out there. That's it. It's out there. You have boldly stated it. You know, uh, you're on the sound mind, and and it's, I, you have released such love and such great energy. To everyone that is listening this morning and that will listen over and over again, for you to be able to be the example, to exemplify, to exemplify healing process, not healed, H-E-D, E-D at the end of healed. Mm -hmm. But the thing that people need to understand, I believe that the, the healing completeness, the wholeness will come when we go home to be with the Lord. Absolutely. Because the, the flesh will forever be a challenge. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not a perfect thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like That's we right. will never be perfect. It will be always something that we struggle with. There will always be things that we are that we're challenged with. But for us to move in such a place like you are moving and for you to be able to make the announcement before the world, that you're in a great place. And if the Lord were to take you home tonight, it would be all right with you because you have lived. Mm-hmm. And the thing mm-hmm. about it is, it's so important for us to get to that place. This is what you miss out on when you're not in a healing process, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is a process that continues. It continues because we don't know everything about ourselves and things don't begin to, it's not light. It's not shedded to, for us to be able to see really what's going on or who we are into their cir- circumstances or different situations, yeah. you know, to we're challenged or until we're pushed. Uh, you don't really know who you are. You yeah. don't know who anybody is that you love until there are challenges. So therefore, yeah. how can you just be healed with the ED? That's right. That's right. You are in a healing process. And look at you. Look at all the beauty, all the things that are happening because you are in a healing process. And you acknowledge it. You don't walk around like, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. You acknowledge that you're in a better place than you were in yesterday. Mm -hmm. And that you are continually growing. Girl, you just shared life this morning. Oh my God, oh my God. You, when I knew that I was starting to heal, um, I had to take care of my my dad. My step, He's my stepdad, but has been my dad since I was one. And um, I was molested by him growing up. And when you can invite your molester into your home and take care of them and wash them and clean them and not want any harm to come to them, and they never admit it, never say they're sorry, 
never and still treat you like a stepchild. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Fed him, took care of him, took him to the doctor, took time off work, sat with him day and night. And when he passed away, I had no, the Lord was like, it's finished. You did a great job. I'm proud of you. Cause I made my mom that promise that I would take care of him. And I did. And I knew at that point, uh, when, when I opened the door, I, my husband was like, you want to let him come stay? I'm like, I don't have a choice. I made my mom that promise. And if I could take care of people on the street that I don't even know, um, without asking them any questions, I'm feeding them and putting them in, up in hotels and houses. I can't get healed in, until I Till I face the process, till I till I you face better, the problem. Please, girl, please, you better change. Oh so, my God. Um that's when my healing when when I opened the door and let my dad in. That's that's when my healing process totally began. And when he passed away in September, um I I knew that I'm you know 40, 50 percent there, maybe 35 on some days, but I knew um that the Lord was pleased and I was pleased with myself by how I handled it. And um, I had no, no ill, no ill will, um, did his, did his services. And um, yeah, that, that, I did it. I did it. So I, I, I lived through that moment, even in the times where I wanted to push him down the steps. And I was like, cause it just seemed like he was ungrateful to, you know, to be here. And I'm like, here you are in my house and I shouldn't be taking care. I mean, honestly, right? I shouldn't be, but I did. And I would do it all. I would do it all over again. I would do it all over again. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on the road. I'm on the right track. Oh my God. I'm on oh the right my track. God. I'm on the right track. Yeah, I'm on oh, the right track. You, oh my God, Lord, Lord, Lord. Okay, let me breathe because I it has happened to me so much has happened to me mm -hmm. and I can relate to so much sis yeah. yeah you have to get to a place to where you're transparent yeah. and very organic in sharing yeah. those hurting places so that others may be healed. You cannot heal what you won't reveal. Absolutely. Absolutely. You, light, you lighten your load it, for the Lord to come and take you home. You need to be light. You need to be able to fly. That's, That's right. That's right. And you are unloading as we serve the people that have hurt us, as we are good to the people that are not good to us as we do the things that are not comfortable to this flesh, you can best believe that you're causing the Lord to smile because the flesh is an enemy against God. We are spirit. We're more spirit than we're a flesh. And the spirit is always in agreement with the Lord, but the flesh don't want to do right. That's right. That's why it's always against what the spirit wants to do. Mm -hmm. And there were times when you did not like it. You did not like it. You did not want to. Absolutely. That was the flesh reminding you. You know what he did? Yeah. You know what he did? Yeah. You know what she did? You know, it's like everybody, anybody that's listening, whenever your flesh is act, acting up and reminding you of places where you need to forgive mm -hmm. and you need to keep pushing and you need to keep pressing. Just know you're not alone. You're not the only one to feel that way, but you got to fight it. You got to fight it because healing is a process. Mm -hmm. And if you can get past it, then you can live that life right. that he promised. Yes. What was that life? If you seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, mm -hmm. all these other things will be added mm -hmm. up to yeah. you. That's right. That's right. That's during the healing process. Mm -hmm. You are an example. For everybody that didn't know, now they know. For everybody that didn't understand how you're living so good and doing so good, how you're always so happy, why you shine like the sun, why is it that when you walk in a room, you consume the space? Mm. It, ain't, it ain't nothing that you are doing on your own. Yeah. You cannot 
do what you've done on your own. Yeah, that's right. That's a right. higher power has been your aid. So oh you. my God, for you to simply say that when the Lord take you home, all you want is for people to know you know that you lived your life. You mm -hmm. worked and you lived your life. That is so selfless. Nothing else matters for the Lord to say, well done. I'm trying to tell you now, that's a big prize right there. For <laughs> well him to done. say, well done, my good and faithful servant. <laughs> well done. Servant. What, welcome. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> welcome home, honey. Welcome home. Yeah, yeah, that's that's all I want. For him to say, well done. You know. God of mercy and Jesus. Know, all this, I, I, ain't, I ain't been no angel myself. So, no, none Lord, of us have, you know, but you know how, now listen, we done it, been to our chair funerals, <laughs> which I do not like to go to, and yeah. I'm telling you people, go out of the way like you would not believe, you know, they got their own way of honoring whoever it is that they love, but yeah. see, I've already put it in writing like you, you know, so it's like, I just want my, my family, my children, my grandchildren to, to be all right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, don't make no big deal out of me. It's like, I'm going to do my work while I'm living. That's right. May the so work if I'm done. you want to give, give me those while I am living. That's right. That's Sis, right. I want That's to right. thank you so much for taking thank this time. I, wa I want you to share with everybody because um, the last time you were on, there was so much happening. Please mm -hmm. let everybody know about your catering business. Let them know about everything that you got going on that the Lord that has just, just given you. Please share with everybody. Sure, thank you. Um, our catering company is By Your Side, and it's B-U-Y-Y-O-U-R-S-I-D-E, catering company, catering C-O um, is, is how we do company. And we're located in Ackworth, Georgia, but we do travel. Um, we handle large events, corporate events, fundraisers, we'll do lunch, um, br bridal showers, baby showers, um, even meal preps. So we do um, all of those facets. And uh, we also have our nonprofit, Will to Way Foundation, that's W-I-L-L, -L, the number two way, that's one word, Foundation Incorporated, where we provide wraparound services for those experiencing homelessness um, or that are just having a hard time. So just the less fortunate and homeless. So um, our goal there is to ensure that no one goes to bed hungry and whatever that we can do to reunite families of those that are experiencing homelessness. If the families are willing to take them back into their homes, then we pay for them to go back into the homes and help them to get um, the therapy that they need as well as a fresh start. So we link them up with other nonprofits in their area that can provide um, counseling services as well as job security, um, help them with their IDs or whatever else is needed. But we do pay for them to, to get home and get a fresh start. Oh, that is beautiful. Now that's different than before, right? Yeah, well, we've always had that as a part of one of our, our outreach programs. Um, we, so we've helped to reunite over 21 um, people with their families. So, oh, that is amazing. Yeah. So how can they give? How can so people you give? Can, you can give all of our social media platforms, our Will to Way Foundation, so our Instagram, um, our Facebook, our Twitter. Um, and you can just follow those links on there. You can do PayPal, Venmo, you, you name it. Just go to our website, click on donate. It's immediately when you open up our page and it's willtowayfoundation.org. And everything is tax deductible and uh, you can help us serve. We serve every Monday in our food truck by feeding the homeless. Um, we were just blessed with about 10,000 pair of socks for, from Bombas. So we'll be passing out socks and hot meals, um, depending on if the weather's hot or cold, because we're in Georgia, we don't know. Um, we'll pass out socks and hot chocolate and coffee, on, um, as well as a, a full meal that we pass out every week. Um, and then if anybody wants to go home, they just come up to me and say, yes, we put them in a food truck, take them to the nearest train station, bus station, um, or we have driven them home and pulled them up to the front door um, ourselves and uh, make sure that they're okay. Yeah. Oh my God, that is so beautiful. I know I just keep saying that, but I'm just so full. I could just bust out crying. Do you still have the app? 
We do still have the Pass a Plate app. Um, most people haven't used it, which is, you know, which is fine. Um, but we do still have its Pass a Plate. So every time you donate at least ten dollars, then what we do is we have a student that is in need, and they will contact us via the app, and we will in turn purchase food for them for that evening. Oh, wow. So. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, the importance of giving. See, uh, Pam was just doing this on her own. She was just loving on people, feeding people, not only strangers, but taking care of her family. And she wasn't making a big deal out of it. She was serving from her heart. But let me tell you how important it is that what you do is genuine. It has to be, because you can't fool God. God mm -hmm. don't bless no mess. <laughs> what you see is a is 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 the truth in this woman doing what pleased God. It's like she didn't make no big deal. I hear hooping and hollering, talking about what I'm doing, what I'm doing. The result of what she was doing from her heart, from pureness, this is what you see. This we're is what you see. A, we're almost at a million people. So we by the end um, of the year we will have served a million people in almost nine years yeah so i'm i'm very pleased worldwide because every time we go on vacation or go to another location we serve so that's what that was, i was going to ask you yeah aren't y'all aren't y'all in different places now because that's something yeah, so that you're working on we have a branch in north carolina okay in, uh, right outside of charlotte um that they serve as well so they do the same things that we do um, in that area and um, but we go to different we we haven't been like you know just because of COVID so we haven't been as many places but typically we do at least four to five places a year um, countries and in in the United States and we partner with nonprofits that are doing the same thing we do and we go and volunteer and serve oh. now hmm. it was something else um for anyone that wants to volunteer, that's what it was. I'm trying not to leave anything out because everybody, they need an opportunity. Some people just sitting on their hands. They don't know <laughs> what to do. They don't yeah. know which direction to go in. So we're going to help them. Okay. So for people that want to volunteer. Yeah. So we're always, we're always looking for volunteers on our food truck. Um, and that's every Monday from six to nine. We're done by nine o'clock. Um, and you can just contact our office, 404 two seven nine two four six one and um we'll do a little background check on you and then you're ready to be able to serve with us we also provide a free lunch every third saturday of the month in cartersville um and to those in need there um so we provide about 200 250 free lunches and we actually distribute all of those out so we pack them at a local church and then go out into the city and pass those out to the sick shut in and then to the local um, people that are in the efficiencies we just go knock on the doors and ask them if they want like a hot meal like a, yeah it's a it's a hot meal um, last month we had um, meatballs and gravy no roast beef and gravy with uh, rice green beans rolls cookies um, so we just knock on door we have about 50 people um, we do all the local shelters in the yeah. area and then we go to the um efficiencies the little motels and, and we knock on their doors and, and and pass out food to them sometimes they ask us to pray with them so we don't turn out that opportunity as well yeah so we we love to have you the third saturday we're at first presbyterian church in cartersville thank you to them because they allow us to come in for free and um we go in there and, and prepare our meals and then we're able to to serve the community in that capacity with no no donations from that we all chip in and do our part each person takes a month and we help that person to prepare all the food and then we go out into the community and serve it what time is that is that meal so we start at eight o'clock getting everything prepared at the kitchen and we're done by 12 12 30. okay one yes. last thing the food donations yeah do you accept food donations and how can they get that to you yeah so we do so you can just call our office and make arrangements for me and, or one of our team and we will 
meet you and come and pick that up. So yes, we were always in need of food donations. Okay, great. I didn't want to leave anything out. I did not want to leave anything out. It's like, I, this was just magnificent. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, Monday motivation quote, God is just getting started with you. He loves, he loves you enough not to rush. Hear that. You are his masterpiece in progress. Y'all see Pam? <laughs> this right here is Pam. Do you understand? This quote is by Naeem Gall uh, Calloway. I, um, I'm beside myself. I'm trying to hold it together because this has been amazing. Oh my God, this has been amazing. It's been one of the hardest interviews for me to keep it together because you hit home for me. You reminded me of some places where God has um, delivered me and where the process is, you know, um, uh, still, you know, doing its thing because, uh, you know, as I stated to you earlier, Pam, is when 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 there's a familiarity, or when you hear someone else's testimony, or when there's a situation, you know, it's like you remember. You know, it's like you really see how far you've come, mm -hmm. and you see the hand of God, and you see if it had not been for the Lord, and, and mm -hmm. then you, it's like the gratefulness come over you. Absolutely. You know, that's what that healing is. We need to always remember. You know, we need to always know our help came from him. Absolutely. And when we, we are sisters forever, we're sisters with other overcomers, we're sister and brothers with other overcomers. All of us that are in this healing process of revealing heal, we're family. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we need each other. Yes. So once again, I want to thank you for saying yes to this interview. This will not be the last time. I'm telling <laughs> you, God is doing so much in your life. We want to continue. There are people that love you, and I know that they want to hear about your story. They want to continue to hear about the elevation and the leveling up that God is doing. So you got to come back and continue to share, okay? I will. I'm going to bring my husband next time. Yes, ma'am, you do. I, I'm we want to hear what he got to say. You, you got to meet the man beside the, the woman, honey, because he's the reason I am who I am. So got to... Okay. Yeah, when he gets off active duty, we're gonna we're gonna make sure that happens. So oh yes, ma'am, and you can come you into can the meet. studio by then. God willing, y'all will be able to come into the studio and Ooh. sit, and we can have tea. You know, and you we can, can just Doctor Whitfield. Yes. Honey. Oh yes, ma'am, and yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, oh my God. Yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> well, listen, sweetie, I want you to uh, say something uh, before I let you go. I just cannot. I'm telling. you, I'm still chewing on so much that you have shared, I just feel in my spirit that the Lord wants you to speak to somebody uh, this morning uh, that is just overwhelmed with your story. Well, I, first of all, thank you again for having me. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for allowing a platform for us to be transparent and that we feel comfortable enough to be transparent. Amen. Because um, you, can't, you can't do that everywhere. So I, I appreciate you for that. Um, but I I guess I'll leave you with this. Um, healing is a process. Healing is necessary. Healing um, will give you some wholeness. Healing will allow you to be happy. Don't be afraid to ask for help. And find your tribe. Find your tribe. And it could be a tribe of one, but find you a person, honey, get you a person that will love I tell my husband this all the time I am his biggest cheerleader and his best fan I will cheer him on good bad or indifferent but when I'm his fan I'm going to tell him when he's wrong I'm still going to love him I'm still going to be his biggest supporter but I'm, I'm going to call the audible and I'm going to tell him when he's wrong and I expect the same of him tell me when I'm wrong put me on the right track but still support what I do and find you your group that will do the same. All right. I we love all need you. accountability, baby. Every, we, we, and we gonna hold each other accountable because we gonna write our books and we gonna have we, us a book. Well, reading. guess what? It's in the, it's out there now, Lord. I'm mercy. It's all over the world, honey. And listen, folks will remind you. I'm gonna, they send messages, honey. I'm, I, 
I can't say something without somebody sending me something. Um, well, we're still waiting on, I said, when I say that, well, you have to go back to the episode six. <laughs> oh my God, what the world? That's so you right, have to be honey. careful, it's out there. It's we gotta do it. We, honey, and we gonna be cute. We gonna have us a book signing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get my hair done. Yes, honey, girl. I want my life to grow like my dreads grow. You hear me? I'm gonna wear this red hair. Yes. <laughs> you gonna wear that red hair, honey? I'm gonna be gray, but we gonna make that thing happen. We gonna be cute out here on the book tour. You hear me? Hey, we're gonna, we gonna take off our mask and we're gonna reveal and heal, honey. We're gonna help some other people heal. Oh my God. Y'all, you gotta love her. I can't. I'm gonna have to let her go. I'm telling you, this has been so good. I for love me. you. Ooh. I appreciate you. You hear me? You keep shining. You keep shining. Oh my God. Right. Thank you for giving me my flowers. Keep, keep being the light, honey. Keep being the light. Keep being the light. We see you. We love you. We appreciate you. And honey, may, may God continue to flourish everything that you touch, everything that you walk by, honey. It just fall out. Ooh, girl, you hear me? I'm going to need help getting up, girl. Come on, honey, girl. That's okay. That's all right. So you have a fantastic day, honey. And we, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for having thank me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It was my honor and pleasure. And I speak for everybody listening because thank you have you. become a favorite. Everyone, please remember to follow us on IG, follow us on Facebook, and our new YouTube channel, Relationship Lounge. We need you to like and subscribe and leave a comment. Guys, okay. leave a comment about what Revealing Hill is doing for you, how you feel about it. I want to know, even if you want to tell me it's whack. You know, at least I can improve and do something to make it fit, you know, because revealing and healing, it doesn't always feel good. And you might not be in a good place. And that's why you say, well, you know, for me, it's not working for me because it's whack. I can accept that because you still, you know, in a place where you have not yet arrived. And it's OK. No judgment on this end. And let me tell you once again, I love you and I thank you all for tuning in every Monday for Motivation Monday. And I pray that it's really a blessing to you. Remember to love yourself, love everybody, and be an example. Amen. Have an amazing day. Bye, sweetie. You deserve it. God bless you, darling. You too.